Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking. Um, what I want to cover today is making hatch patterns in, in Revit. Uh, we had somebody ask us to create some custom tile hatches for them and the challenge that came up was not the typical running bond but a one-third staggered bond. So what I want to cover today is how you can get that into your system. Um, so if I open up Revit here, you can take a look at this wall that I've got. I've got just a standard uh, running bond going on here. So if I go into the wall itself, you can see that <clears throat> I've applied that surface pattern to this basic generic wall. One of the ways that you can get to these settings are from additional settings in your Manage tab. And if you click on Fill Patterns, you'll see that you have two types. You've got Drafting and Model Patterns. So the difference is quite subtle. The drafting patterns will change scale when you change your scale in your view. And the model patterns essentially are your surface patterns that you're going to use on the 3D model so that when you're in model space or like a 3D view, you won't see a change in scale when you zoom in, zoom out. Um, so I've got this brick one. This is what I've applied. So if I want to create a new one, what I'm going to do is create new and then go to custom. And then I need to import um, a PAT file, a .pat. So let's take a look at that location. Um, where you're going to find that is in C Drive, Program Files, Autodesk, whichever version of Revit you're working on. And then under the data folder, you'll see two versions, one for metric and one for uh, your imperial. So if we open that up with uh, Notepad, You'll see that there's some logic in here on how to create these. There's some good information. Um, but let's just take a look at this here. We've got a block pattern that's 8 by 16. And this is just your typical running bond. So I'm going to try and explain this to the best of my ability here. Your first line, the 0, represents that it's a horizontal line. And then the next one, the 90, means that it's vertical, going straight up. Um, over here, you have your x and y coordinates. So these these two here are both representing X and Y. And then you have the height relative over here. This is um, the shift. So there's no shift on the first line or the horizontals. Um, the height is representing the first digit. And then underneath, we've got um, this is basically um, one half of the length for a typical running bond. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is modify this second line. So I'm going to open up another pot file that I have saved in uh, on my desktop. One of the things you might want to do is just create a copy. Um, you might get an issue overwriting this or rewriting a pot file to this location. So I'm just going to close this one down for the time being and open up this other one that I have here. So you can see the same thing that I've got, what we were just looking at right here. So I'm going to copy this, and I'm just going to put another line right underneath it. Okay, so I'm going to want to make some changes here. So this number right here, this is going to be 16, because we're going to change the, the shift on this as well. Okay, so this is going to be 16 here. This, this third line that was at, um, at 8 before, we're going to change that to the overall length of our block. Now I'm going to take this line item here and I'm going to put in a second line. So I'll just put in a couple spaces there and copy that over again. So what I need to do is figure out what are the, the balance, the two-thirds for my X coordinate. Okay, so if I open up uh, the calculator, I probably don't need to do this, but um, basically I'm just going 0.66 times 16. And I get 10.56. So that's going to be my X coordinate for the second mortar joint. And then over here, I need this to shift up um, by 16 inches. Okay, so I'm going to move that one. It's going to go up 16 inches. And in here, we've got that same 16. And then we'll leave the dashes and the spaces at 8 and 8. So I believe that should work. If not, we'll come back in and fix it. So I'm just going to save this now. And I'm going to go back into Revit and where I've got my new pattern. Oh, I forgot to do something here. This is what you're going to see when you pick it from the list. So you want to change this in here to one third uh, staggered bond. Or I could just say staggered. 
the second stuff, the second line, you won't see that after the comma. So this is um, more for your more for your information. So we'll just call that one third bond. And let's take a look at this and see how this works. Okay. So this is still relatively new to me. It was um, something that we've we've been taking a look at the past little while, and I'm learning amongst the rest of you. So I'm just going to go back to my Revit and import this file. So I've got that on my desktop, and I hit open. And now you'll see all the patterns that have been named. So I'm just going to scroll down until I see the one that I just created here, block 8 by 16. Okay, so I've got an issue here. Um, right now, these two line items are they're too close. Okay, so I've got to go back to my file and shift that. I believe that's this one here. So I'm going to make that an 8. And I'm just going to save this again and go back to Revit. I'll re-import that file, and when I go back to that, back to that setting or that um, that reference, you'll see I got block eight by sixteen, and now it's shifted. Okay, so I'm just going to hit OK, and now I've got that pattern in my my Revit file. So now this is kind of baked into this Revit project. I don't need to go back to that uh, that pop file anymore. Okay, so I'm just going to hit OK. And then one of the things that you can do to test this is you can use dimensions on these mortar joints. So let me just grab this wall and I'll hit edit type and I'm going to go back into the brick common bond. I'm not going to worry about the material name for the time being. I mean, I could make this carpet and still apply this surface pattern to it. But um, now I'm going to go into the model categories and I'm going to find that one that I just created. So it's this guy here, block. 8 by 16, one third staggered, and I'll hit OK and apply that. And you might want to change the color. Um, I'm not going to bother for the time being. I'm just going to hit OK and accept this. So then if you're testing these out and you want to see what's happening, you can go into an elevation view and use an aligned dimension. And you can hover over these joints and you can actually get the dimensions here. So I'll pull that out and I've got an 8 inch height which is okay and then if I dimension this I've got 1 foot 4 for the length and you can see that if I dimension from here to here it's 10 and 9 sixteenths. Okay so that's creating um, that one third running bond or one third stack bond and um, you know seems kind of simple but we racked our brain for a little bit on this. I'm not a, a code guy, but just want to give a shout out to Jason at uh, Hanson and Jung for helping us with this because uh, his his young flexible mind was really quick to solve this issue. So thanks, Jason, and thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Bye now.